The first station, Jesus before Pilate. Imperious magistrate, both judge and jury, upholder of the empire law, you face a task not faced before. Your wife has told you of her dreams. It seems that you should do what you can to wash your hands of this man of peace, for he is innocent of crime. Dare you face your Caesar's anger? Should you not heed the danger of the howling mob? It is your job to keep control. Or should you be concerned for your immortal soul? Listen, better one man sacrificed than a nation in revolt and turmoil. Do not spoil your life's work for such an unimportant man. Does it not make sense to condemn? Just pen the word. Guilty. Take care, Pilate, for you judge yourself. Thirty-nine lashes. Each stroke multiplied by seven thongs, knotted to inflict more injury. No part of his body left unbloodied. Head hooded with a scrub of thorns, pressed into flesh, Enough to satisfy the mob? No, not enough. For now, he must bear the rough wood of his death upon his shoulder, through the city, unto Golgotha. Jagged, splintered wood, abrasive into open wounds. Legs almost too weak to stagger, face bruised and haggard. His nightmare journey begins. Third station, Jesus falls for the first time. 
Feet dragging, soldiers bragging, pushing, swearing. No one caring much other than to complete the task. Do what was asked in as short time as possible. Then, before anyone could tell, the prisoner fell. Because his hands were bound, it was impossible to soften the floor. Face crashing into stony ground, more skin splitting, swollen, livid, bruising, laceration. No matter how he tries, he cannot rise. Friday dawn, the clear, sharp air, promise of heat yet to come. No sleep last night, eyes swollen, red with tears. The news confirmed her darkest fears. Lines of worry crease her brow. To friends she seems much older now. Pain and torment line her gentle face. And as she tries to summon grace, fighting terror in the morning sun, she whispers soft, Thy will be done. He was her sacred only child. How could she prepare? How could she bear the sight of him that greeted her? No recorded words do we find, but what thoughts pierced her tortured mind? My son, my son, dear God, if this thing has to be, please help him in this, his agony. Thy will be done, my son, my son.
Soldiers forced Simon against his will to help Jesus carry his cross up the hill to Calvary. He did not wish to take the burden, but complied as directed and accepted humiliation. Jeering, jostling crowd, no mercy, baying like a pack of animals, they taunt and condemnation directly towards anyone who might show pity. Kill, kill, kill. kill. rush to, to Golgotha Hill. Hill, take their lives, condemn, condemn. along, along with, with anyone, anyone who might sympathise. Courage, Veronica, walk bravely into the menace. Face the taunt, the spittle, ignore the sneers. Do not hear the crude obscenities. One act of kindness, gently wipe his face. What have they done to you? See how we Soldiers roughly push her to one side, into the heaving mob, who would punch and kick and spit at her. She weeps, for she could do no more. Too many distractions for this action to be finished in due time. Keep the prisoner on the move, to prove to any would-be messiah that they will have to answer to a higher Roman authority. The Son of God, now so humble, do not let him stumble and fall again. He cannot take much more pain, must survive to execution. Fools, he's fallen down. Force the crown back on his head. Ensure his regalia is complete. Now pull him, drag him to his feet. Beat him. Onward, faster, faster, move him forward, noble lord and master. Thank you. 
Clear the street, you women weeping. Move away, you bleating sheep. Stand aside. Woe betide your crying, wailing nonsense. Ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. Sheer exhaustion. Killing pain. Make him stumble yet again. Mind already numbed with fear. Falling, yet more wounds appear. The cross, the crushing awful weight, pinning him down to the ground. Sweet oblivion, too exhausted to rise. Rough, calloused hands unmercifully drag him to his feet. Tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. Why are we surprised the soldiers despised him? They would have been of lowest rank and probably as some punishment. They had the task to keep him alive just as far as Calvary. They looked on with eyes that did not see, ears that did not hear, minds blotted out other than to inflict misery. They had seen it all before. What was one wretch more? The sooner he was crucified and died, then quicker would their own punishment be ended. Eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Pain in every nerve and sinew, mind tormented by horrors still to come, stumbling up the hill to make the final sacrifice, body weak, the spirit willing it to move forward, the cross lying on the stone-hard ground, nails glinting silver in the scorching sun, impatient executioners wait, gripping heavy hammers, efficient, coarse, uncaring body in position trip him backwards straight down onto the cross no loss of time he lies looking up to heaven hands pulled into place his face turns again he sees the jagged nails now held in the fist of the executioner one nail pressed into his wrist hammer raised blotting out the sun Single, arcing, downward blow to shatter flesh and muscle, fusing, yielding flesh to rough-hewn wood. Shadow of the executioner falls across his body. Second silver gleam, sun obscured. Searing, tearing pain beyond imagination, cross now raised, the crowd exclaims, Crucify him! He hears leaden footfall. Practised hands jerk his feet into position. Feels shining barb, ice cold against his flesh. He tries to rest, to ease his breathing, only to transfer agony from arms and wrists to feet. Nearly complete. Behold this broken husk of flesh, running blood now congealed and set. Heat, flies, Dust, sweat, suffering not over, yet. His pain as he prepares to die, Save yourself, the mocking cry. Racked now by dreadful loneliness and weak with pain, In his humanity cries, Father, why have you forsaken me? Thorns barb deeper into his flesh as he turns his head. He can just see, silvered nails now rusting red. Flies feast at his lacerated wounds. Yet, with such love, he begs his father to forgive. Torpid, fetid air clung to the hill. No hint of wind to touch the trees. Foreboding cowered those watching still. An ominous feeling of great wrong. Fear rippled through the baffled throng. Then they heard the sound of distant thunder. In the final silence, whispered words. To you, my God, my spirit, I commend. Pain and torment ended, suffering now no more. Remove the fixing nails. Lower the corpse. Numb with fatigue, shock, blocking out all of the thoughts. Mary holds him in her arms for one last time. Lady of Sorrow, silently rocking to and fro, just as with her child so long ago. Oh, no.
Gentle hands now carry him towards the rock of borrowed tomb, where, using herbs and spices as is the custom, women wash and prepare his body with care and loving tenderness. Night comes swiftly. Time to leave. Dusk. Mary silhouetted in the dark doorway. One last lingering look. Did she see him sleeping in swaddling bands? Her beloved son now lifeless, lying wrapped in cool linen. Stone rolled harshly. Grating, breaking into her thoughts. Sentinel soldiers, unmoved, unmoving. Women supporting each other in their grief, turn homeward. Shuffling footsteps fade and leave the tomb to all pervading darkness.